Why is this Star Citizen's best ship in game? I believe this is a phase one, uh, like ship showdown type of video, but also a ship review. And it is, I think, the ship that I hate the most. It's a useful shipping game now, but I've always hated this ship the most, and it is the Constellation. Welcome, I'm Void Dude, and you're watching the best damn Star Citizen ship review show. And what better time for a ship review than during the Star Citizen show? Down. Rest assured, we take Spaceship JPEGs very seriously here on this channel, and there will be absolutely no memeing on my watch. Anyway, the Greycat PTV is a fantastic vehicle. It has four wheels and an engine, so in the event that you... Wow, what a cool skit to set up the real star of this best damn Star Citizen I ship review. You've probably seen me fly ship. the Aquila pretty often on this channel, and the reason why is because my wife, who unfortunately is educated, has shared access to my bank account and can see my monthly statements. Like this video and subscribe <laughs> to my channel so that one day I can become a dirty shill and open up a second secret bank account and use that one to buy lots of fake internet spaceships. As you know, all good ships have a name, so let's call this one USS Voyager. Let's begin! Let's be honest, most of us probably I love got this into ship, Voyager I because it. of Seven I want to be clear. Lines, and also because it's the loner ship for the Drake Corsair, which is the ship we all actually own because that thing looks like it's really going to slap. Corsair. What the hell are you just Corsair. 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 However, oh in the God. future, after the Corsair's been available in game for a while, we'll probably all just melt them and pick up Aquilas again because we'll realize that while the Corsair looks great on paper and in theory, its painted Drake hull is probably going to be as thin and flimsy as the paper all that great theory is written down on. So, after getting wrecked by a few hardcore elite sweaty tryhard PvP dogfighters piloting Auroras, we'll want something with a bit less bang and a bit more buck. And that's where USS Voyager comes in, she has lots of buck. That line makes no sense, but the Constellation series of ships are advertised as multi-role, and that indeed appears to be the case. However, unlike her three sisters, and much like the show, USS Voyager leans more heavily towards exploration. Yeah. I can definitely vouch for its capability. Which is like... I don't get the point of it now, so how can this be the best ship? I thought it was just going to be this one right you know, behind me, which is the Andromeda. Because you got two turrets, tons of missiles. It's useful in the current experience. Capabilities in this area because a while ago at Jumptown, I put Voyager's exploration speciality to extremely efficient use by using the side airlocks to explore other people's cargo holes with my tractor beam nice. and making groundbreaking discoveries in the form of valuable space drugs. Speaking of exploring things, <laughs> the view from USS Voyager's now I know what he means. is arguably better than the other constellations because it's the only one with a unique cockpit. However, yep. the Robert in Robert Space Industries really likes to strut his stuff, and so our gorgeous views while doing epic explorations are often obscured due to all the actual invasive struts. It's a small price to pay though because when you compare that minor perceptibility fault to the ship's armaments, it's easy to forgive her for this strutty behavior. As with all the other Connies, USS Voyager boasts four size 5 weapon hardpoints, giving the pilot a lot of firepower. Sadly though, life continues to be filled with disappointments, and the lower two hardpoints are force locked to gimbals, meaning they are restricted to size 4s. Switching the top oh, stock never size 4s to fixed size 5s, however, only really makes sense if you intend to be going after larger targets, because the slow turning rate of this big whale means hitting anything smaller than your mom will probably be unlikely. USS Voyager also boasts a seriously decent complement of four size five missile racks. Provide Don't you feel like Hmm. I just like had a weird thought that like the co pilot seat should maybe just control these and maybe they should just be turrets. Providing you with a stock total of twenty-four customizable projectiles. 
But Voyager's potential for destruction doesn't stop there. Alongside Good all thing those weapons are all and fireworks, ships, or else the ship be boasts flawed. not I one, know. but two elevators. Yes, you heard that correctly. Two elevators. Someone needs to get in touch with CIG's Department of Game Balance, as this is absolute insanity. Don't take my word for it though, because here's an official chart that shows the leading causes of death throughout the centuries within the Star Citizen universe. As you can see, between the Vandal invasion of the Vega system and Server 30k errors, <laughs> elevators are Grim the Hex second campers, most deadly the entities for plaguing 42. humankind in this grim dark future. Let's take this into account as we talk about Voyager's ample cargo hold that comes in at a capacity of 96 SCU, which also serves as the ship's second elevator. The incredible Star Citizen wiki tells us that one SCU is equal to about 1.95 meters cubed. So if comfort is of no concern, which it is not, about eight Star Citizens can fit inside one SCU. So after a bit of math that I actually got approved by a qualified smart person, we can infer that Voyager can fit 768 citizens within her spacious cargo area. Now okay. let's also take into account that it takes roughly nine seconds for the cargo elevator to elevate. This gives Voyager's cargo lift a theoretical KPM of 5,120 through pure elevation devastation. Spoiler alert, but it's no wonder they eventually made it back to the Alpha Quadrant. Like and subscribe if you think Captain Catherine Janeway would totally use Star Citizen elevators to defeat the entire Borg collective. The fact that this ship is capable of committing actual massacres should make the Constellation Aquila the clear winner of the 2942 sh show down. I mean, I don't see the Grey Cat PTV committing any genocides anytime soon because it doesn't even have one elevator. Who can take this buggy mess seriously? True. The USS Voyager also comes with a sweet P-52 Merlin snub fighter that docks yep. snugly right in the ship's bum, I mean lower stern. I had to Google what the bum of a ship was for this video. Learning new things is so great. Who knew that Voidy Vids was a source of such incredible nautical <laughs> knowledge? We're in a Kruger Intergalactic P-52 Merlin now, and as you know, all good ships have a name, even quantum driverless snub fighters, so we'll call this one Ensign Harry Kim. Man, what great value. You came for one best damn Star Citizen ship review, and you're getting two. Despite only having a size 1 shield generator, Ensign Harry Kim can be pretty handy in a fight, deal some decent damage, and is pretty damn quick. It's also been a top contender in the Snake Pit race course, according yeah, to the Star racer. Citizen Racing website site leaderboard, which is pretty cool. Ensign Harry Kim also boasts two gimbaled size 1 weapon slots, however the size 2 Tiger Strike T-19P Ballistic Gatling built into the midsection of the little fighter that could cannot be swapped out, so it's just like Ensign Harry Kim to never see a promotion. I took USS Voyager out the other day for some Star Citizen fun times and noticed someone in chat stating that they were giving away free rail guns. He mentioned that he was in a bunker on Hurston and that the crates there had an unusual excess of rail guns waiting to be looted. I may be a gullible but stranger things have happened, and so I believe this offer to be true. Also, Jumptown <laughs> has probably already started no by the time this video gets uploaded, and I was really hoping to get hold of some sweet destructive railguns in preparation for the event. I arrived at the bunker, which was in a restricted area, and started taking fire from the ground turrets. As we mentioned before, USS Voyager is a bit of a whale, and avoiding their fire proved difficult. I had replaced the Merlin with an Archimedes, and thought this might be a pretty cool time to try it out for the first time. Because like many of you, oh, I only no, the grabbed Archimedes one of the past fly sales well, as an LTI token to one day upgrade to an actual good ship. Taking out the turrets from the Archimedes proved as difficult, if not more so, than from Voyager, and I eventually gave up to return to the mothership. To the surprise of absolutely no one, the whole thing was a trap. I'm now fighting <laughs> for my life in a dinky snub fighter against a new Luke Skywalker in an X-Wing. This isn't how Star Wars is supposed to be. I tried my best, but this thing proved exceptionally hard to what, fly even? in atmosphere. I don't know how the legends in the various Star Citizen racing communities do it. I have a lot to learn. It's common. Because the P-72 is broken, the P-52 is not. Knowledge that Star Wars fans hate Trekkie, so it's unsurprising that Luke Skywalker continues to offload his lasery justice into USS Voyager. Hopelessly outgunned, he finally finishes me off, and I'm as unsurprised as you are at the outcome of my gullible stupidity. 
I'm constantly blown away by the positive feedback this channel gets and I'd like to say thank you again for your views, your subscriptions and your feedback. As always, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you around the verse. So for me, he never talks about the interior. And the interior is the one that that I, I just absolutely... I mean, he does a little bit with the cargo hold. But the interior is the thing that just kills that ship for me. Is every other ship with an interior has just far surpassed, surpassed every Connie. It's sad, man. Because the Connie is actually a cool ship. Got some cool features. Got some firepower. Got some, you know box moving power, cargo hauling power, uh, hopefully some engineering multi-crew power. It's got the ability to move vehicles, right? It is just so old. Um, so whenever a gold standard rework happens, it'll, we'll see what, we'll see what happens with the interior, but I hope for a complete overhaul from start to finish with that ship. The thing that, that is the, I think the mistake they made with that ship is it's very thin right so like if you look at it from a cross section it's quite thin and then the engines come out um they would have to like beef it up in order to to fit i guess actual like interior stuff in it um yeah i don't know why they insist on giving pilots so much power in multi-crew ships i imagine because they just don't have the time or priority or care to design actual multi-crew ships right now would be my guess but that is the one like i the connie was my first multi-crew ship and i upgraded my andromeda to an aquila because i just you know i thought exploration was cool all the stuff that doesn't exist now and and, and won't for very very long time is uh what i wanted and then i believe i upgraded it to a carrick yeah so i had a a really cheap um upgrade ticket or whatever the hell they're called i can't even remember i haven't purchased anything in so long that i upgraded the the connie aquila to a carrick for like 50 bucks or 75 bucks or something it was quite cheap and um yeah now i don't have one anymore but the interior of the carrick is it, just as bad in so many ways, but so much better that, yeah, the Connie's like the little ship that could.